And we're live. Hello, welcome. My name is Gabrielle Javier Cerulli, and I am the author of Archetypes and Art Journaling, or Art Journaling Your Archetypes. The, <laughs> the title's still being discussed with the editor. Uh, I have here Sarah Trump, who is an artist of all kinds of medium, and she's also in the book. Welcome, Sarah. Hi, thank you. I'm glad to be here. And she's coming in from New York as well. Not New York City, but New York State as well. So tell the folks who are going to be watching this, Sarah, what you do and where you do it and how you do it. <laughs> um, well, I started, I'm mostly a sculptor. I used to mostly be a sculptor. Um, now I'm mostly an art journaler, which is a strange, strange transition for me because I came, came into it sort of reluctantly. So, um, so, but that's pretty much all I do at this point. Um, and I am doing um, Journal 52 with Effie Wild, which is a, a weekly journaling prompt thing right. <laughs> with like 10,000 people who are signed up for it, which is awesome. Um, so pretty much all I do is art journal and Makes sense. Yes. So I found uh, Sarah um, through her through her sculptures and also her. I don't know if they would be called whimsical because they're kind of creepy whimsical, but <laughs> very cool, funny uh, drawings. Do you have any of your old? Well, not your old sculptures, but your sculptures. I know I you a, sell a, a lot of them, so I don't know if you have any hanging around. Yes, I do have a couple, and I forgot to grab them, but they're right behind. Me. <laughs> <laughs> or I thought they were right behind me. Ah, well, there they are. Oh, I love seeing artist studios. Yeah, <laughs> such a messy studio, but oh. um, so I have like, well, this the, yes, what I've been making recently are these little dolls. She's got little tentacle arms, um, and then these like, oh, it's got wax on it. She's um, these Day of the Dead dolls, um, but that's actually about all that I have that is unsold at the moment. Right, so that's how I actually found her. And then, so if you also translate that look onto paper, that's how her, art, not all of it, but a lot of her artwork as, uh, looks as well, and you'll see that in the book. And um, we'll get into this a little bit, but the big thing that, uh, uh, the surprise of when I did your archetypes, the big surprise was it wasn't, um, you, didn't have, you don't have Rebel, because a lot of people probably think, oh, she has those, creepy doll kind of things or those uh, dark kind of dark humor kind of things. So she has to be rebel or something, but it all comes out of this comedian part of you. <laughs> right. Right. Yeah. I thought, I thought that was, I w was sure that I would have that in there too, but, but I'm not much of a rebel. <laughs> <laughs> Which is funny because I mean, the pink hair, the, the doll, the artwork, but it's more, again, this light humor, this um, comedian, uh, it, it's just, it, it brings a lot of lightness to the world and to your students and to your artwork. Right, yeah. It definitely comes out of a, out of a happy place than, um, than throwing the finger to society place, you know? Yeah, and just speaking of that, so then what drew you to uh, be interested in being part of, the, uh, of my book? Um, well, archetypes have always been really fascinating to me. Um, just that that there are just these basic, you know, core personality traits, you know, and, um, and it was, it was really fascinating figuring out um, what, what I am and what I thought I was and what I'm not really, <laughs> you know, um, and I had had some experience with archetypes in the past um, with, I had done illustrations for a book, like my very, very first paintings ever were um, for a book on archetypes. So it sort of is, you know, true to my roots, I guess. Right. Yeah. And the um, it is very important when people are going through an archetypal session, not only are you discovering who you are, but interestingly, and actually as important, if not more important, who you are not. Right. That's the big thing. Right. Uh, and some of, uh, and you'll find out in the book as well, is uh, so comedian we talked about of course artist and teacher she already talks about her uh classes that she does online and um another surprise two surprises i guess well detective wasn't because of all the other volunteer work you do but um mystic and hermit can you speak to that and and how do, do those show up in your artwork as at all 
Um, yeah, they actually, because I think because of our um, session, I have really started to get more in touch with my inner mystic, which, mm. um, which has been really awesome. But, um, you know, I'm like very spiritual, but also extremely solitary. I don't want anybody telling me how, how I should connect with whatever higher power I should be connecting with, you know? And so, so that has been a huge thing um, for me, uh, like the last six months or so is really, really connecting with that because it showed up so prominently in my reading. So that was, that was really cool. It was really cool. And actually you do the mystic. <laughs> One of my favorite um, pieces of yours that you've ever done is actually, you're going to be in the book is that mystic. It just makes me smile every time I see it. It is just, just so fascinating. Uh, and it's actually done with quite simple um, art materials. Like you did some pan pastels and some painting. So yeah. it's not like anything um, difficult for someone to, to duplicate, but, um, but it, it's just such a, a strong piece, but so funny too. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. And that, that's sort of how I feel as, as my own, you know, mystic is just this kind of goofy person standing there trying to find my way, you know? <laughs> right. Right. Yeah. And, and does mother ever show up in your artwork as well? Um, I think mother shows up so much in just my normal life that it doesn't necessarily <laughs> need to be in the art. I mean, it does, it does a little bit, I guess, but like, I mean, I am so, so I'm mean, like the ultimate earth mother. So it, if I know you, I'm trying to mommy you, it doesn't matter who you are. So. And you, and you do not all, not all folks who have the mother or father archetype have to be actual parents, but you do. How many kids do you have? Um, I have three, and then I also have about ten um, accessory children that just like sort of flow in and out of my house. So that's yeah. wonderful. <laughs> yeah. uh, so why do you think archetypal work and art journaling go well together? Well, they're both so much about self discovery and mm -hmm. um, and knowing yourself and really being in touch with who you actually are inside. So if you work through your your archetypes as a as a basis for um, for self recognition, then then in your art journal you can you can start to use that to understand yourself better. Mm -hmm. um, which is the great thing about art journaling, anyway. I mean, just from its at its root is is a way to really get to know yourself. Um, and I think the archetypes really can help with that because then you have like general, it's, it's sort of like the Zodiac, you know, like if you say like, I'm a Virgo, so I have these general traits, um, the, the archetypes are the same thing. Like you can say, okay, I am a mystic or I am a mother or I am. And so then you can explore that um, yeah. with the journaling so that you can sort of figure yourself out a little more, which I think is really, really important for everybody to be able to do, you know. Yeah, and I actually did it. Uh, one of the catalysts for behind why I did it is because, like any creative journey, you know, there some some people get stuck. So I knew a lot of art journalers who were kind of like in a rut of like creating the same pages and like right. close to like giving up on art journaling or like had like art journaling block. And I just think, oh, here's here's another avenue that you can explore with your eight, nine uh, archetypes to, to work with and to, to uh, process. Oh yeah. Yeah, absolutely. And, and I think that there's, since there's so like art journaling is such a big thing in the mixed media world right now that, and there's so many, there's so much out there to, to sort of get overwhelmed by and to, and to like, you lose your focus as to like, I want to make this page look exactly like this person made this page look right. instead of, turning it to in like turning it inward and being like, okay, I, this page, how can I make this apply actually to me versus, you know, how can I just make my stuff look nice? You know? Right. Yeah. And everybody in the book, I'm assuming, I, yeah, I can, I think I can say this blanket, all the folks who are in the book that I, uh, that's going to be published soon is all about, yes, here's my example, but please make it your own, you know, like, right. don't, yeah. Don't, oh, yeah, uh, and there's no, but even, even the folks who are the teachers like yourself and Natalie, not everybody's a teacher. Interestingly, um, they especially are like, I will teach you the steps and I'm very much about technique, but 
But again, please make it your own because right. Um, right. You know, we're not at the uh, Art Institute of Chicago here trying to learn some sort of, some, well, actually, even there, they probably would say, please make it your own. Yeah. <laughs> well, uh, and I think um, the art journaling part of it, it, that part is extra essential, you know, because you can make something that looks like something that Nat did or something that Tam did or, or whatever. And, and, th but then like, that's not, even if, even if you're making something that, that looks like one of their characters, it still can represent you you know, through the journaling part or through, you know, symbols or, you know, right. whatever it is. Or color or medium. Yeah, yeah. I mean, we, we, of course, we all say, yes, if you got to, if you got to copy us, feel free, but then yeah. make it your own because there are those baby steps. People can't just, who just are starting in art journaling. Uh, so the folks who are going to be coming at this through the um, personal development world, you know, they, this is the first time they're going to see an art journal or gesso or pan pastels or something. And they're right. gonna, and that, it, it's overwhelming. Um, so yes, please, you know, we're not saying don't follow along, but yes, follow along, but then take it and make it your own. It would just be a lot more enjoyable. <laughs> right, right, and and more useful. I mean, if you're mm -hmm. if you're trying to figure yourself out and you're, and you're looking at your archetypes and you're trying to like, you're trying to, you know, suss yourself out that more, um, it's, it's going to ultimately be more useful for you if you take what you see and then figure out how to make it work for you instead of um, just trying to duplicate, right. you know. Or try to make something pretty. I mean, that's right. the big thing. It's not, I mean, you, you can, see, that's the big thing that I even discuss a little bit in the book. You can have an art journal to make attractive, pretty things. That's one kind of art journal. Yeah. Most of us do art journaling to get in there and to figure stuff out and make ugly stuff and to make stuff that doesn't make sense and to make stuff that confuses us. And then if it happens to become look, looking nice, then that's great. But that's not, it's more process than product. But you can have a product-oriented journal as well. Yeah. Uh, the ones that I show around in my classes are most, are, are half product, half process oriented. The ones that I, I never show, my real, real personal ones are all process and those uh, don't get seen. <laughs> yeah <laughs> well and I think it's important too to take the bad with the good you know like if you are having a really crappy day you're not gonna you're not gonna necessarily want to make something that is just pretty unless you're doing it like as an escape and you want you want to cover up the crap with the pretty but um but yeah I mean make angry marks make you know make something horrifying and you can always paint over it later if you don't want to look at it but but you know like getting that stuff out is is the most essential thing, I think. I agree. So tell us what's coming up for you. Any products that, any new products on your end? Any books, what your classes, any, well, you used to do the, the art show circuit. Are you still going and, and doing that as well? What's coming up? Um, no, I'm not, I have, I'm not signed up for any shows this year. Um, I'm really sort of more focusing on, um, like passive sort of, you know, things where I can, I can make something and then like, then I can just, it, it can just sit out there, you know, mm -hmm. and I can concentrate more on um, classes and like my stencils that I've been designing. Um, and I'm working on a curriculum for a watercolor journaling class, um, all watercolor mm -hmm. instead of uh, mixed media. Mm -hmm. And I'm working on curriculum or a chakra uh, art journaling class. And um, and yeah, I have two two full classes, one all, also on with watercolors and one um, through a several like sculpting and um, art journaling and canvas painting um, on my website. Wow. So are you still selling um, on Etsy? Yeah. And can you tell yeah. folks how they find you on there? Um, I have um, wonderstrumpet.etsy.com. Um, that is my stencils and my artwork. And then I also have strumpetstitches.etsy.com, which is my um, like cross stitch patterns and plush stuff, that kind of stuff. Oh. And, and is, it, um, is it too late for folks to join uh, the, F, the 52 Weeks of Journaling with you and Effie? Oh, no, not at all. And it's free. Mm -hmm. It's um, journal52.com. 
Um, and there's also a Facebook group. And like I said, there's almost 11,000 people joined that have joined right now. We do two prompts a week, one um, sort of deep excavating one and one sort of light irreverent one. <laughs> and, um, and I do, I do a new YouTube video, like time lapse for that every two weeks. And, um, and yeah, it's, it's all free and you just journal 52.com. Wow. That's right. You, that's the other thing is you have a ton on your YouTube channel. Yeah. I, I, and this is probably how that's probably going back a couple of years now, right? Yeah. Yeah. I think about two years. Wow. Yeah. And the, your YouTube channel is? Um, it, you can find me by Wonder Strumpet. I think it's uh, Sarah the Muppet is actually <laughs> the full. Um, but you can search it by Sarah Trump or Wonder Strumpet and it'll come up. Can you tell folks how you spell your last name? T-R-U-M-P-P, two P's, no evil. <laughs> no, yeah. And it's S-A-R-A-H, so Sarah Trump. Yeah. Yeah, Trump Papa. <laughs> All righty, and one last thing. How do people find you just your regular website? Uh, wonderstrumpet.com or wonderstrange.com. I have both. All righty. Thank you so much. Have a good night. Thank you.